Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Here we are again. I'm Joel, along with Mike, getting together for this week's Growing in Grace podcast. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. Uh, We love having you along with us. Thousands and thousands of downloads uh, every month. Um, Not exaggerating there. Uh, you know, it's not something, Cap, that you and I have, we didn't set out, you know, 11 years ago doing this podcast thinking, man, how can we go about trying to get thousands and thousands of downloads every month? We just, <laughs> what, what we have, you and I, is, is this heart to help people be free. Because, you know, you've heard the expression, hurt people, hurt people. Well, in the same way, free people, free people. And we have been set free. Uh, through the grace of God, by his love, and we simply want to help others to be free. Whether it's one person listening to this thing every week, or uh, dozens, or hundreds, or whatever, uh, our goal, our aim, is to help people to be free with the freedom for which Christ has set us free. It's really that simple. That's why we do what we do. And uh, last week, Cap, I mentioned how you know you were talking about this list of stuff that Jesus required to be a, a disciple of his. Now go back and listen to this if you, if you haven't heard it uh, so that you know what we're talking about here. But I said, when you, when you got done with it, I said, man, that stresses me out. That's hard. And, and so we're going to this week talk about the opposite of that. We're going to talk about the rest that we have, resting in Christ. Yeah, because over the last couple of weeks, we've tried to point out what religion will coach us to do. And some of those things included being that dedicated disciple, that faithful follower. I know they all sound good, and and it preaches good, but it takes you down the wrong path. And like Joel said, you you really ought to go back and and listen for a couple of podcasts to to get caught up with us. But having said that, several weeks ago, we even talked about how we make Jesus Lord or how we make him Lord of our life, and and that becomes a work, and it becomes our responsibility, and suddenly the burden falls on us. And so, yeah, there's so much, Joel. But I I know some people would say, but wait a minute, you know, guys, uh, didn't Jesus say that uh, people would know we are his disciples by our love for one another? Well, Jesus made a statement similar to that, but not exactly. He, He said it to his disciples. 13th chapter of John. He addressed them as little children, which is a term that is used by a teacher to their disciples. It's a term of endearment and affection. And he told them to love one another as he loved them. So he was speaking to his pupils, his students who were with him and had been learning from him. And then he commissioned those 11 apostles eventually to to go and make disciples of all nations. And to make disciples, Joel, that's an action word, and that simply means teaching others. And the word nations, that's where the word Gentile comes from. So go out and, and teach nations. And that's a, that was a startling statement, really, because he was commissioning the apostles to go out and teach and proclaim a message to those outside of Israel. So that, that was all a, a pretty big thing. And again, you know, I said it real quick at the end of last week, but after the book of Acts, the word disciple never shows up in New, Te- New Testament writings. It's nowhere to be found in the New Covenant because it's not part of your spiritual DNA. So you can stop trying to follow Jesus by carrying your own cross, giving up all your possessions, and and all of those things. Count the cost. Realize that you and I could not pay it. Uh, We could not save ourselves. And uh, that's what Jesus was was trying to show the people that he was speaking to at, at that time. And I mentioned that those rigid requirements of being his disciple <laughs> that Jesus was laying out for people, it just doesn't quite harmonize with other things that he said, like my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And uh, come to me if, if you're burdened and heavy laden and you'll find rest for your souls. Matthew 11. So let's talk about this resting thing here, Joel. Let's, let's move on from where we've been the past few weeks about the law of works and us doing all of these things that w- was really futile anyway. Let's get past that into this life in Christ that we really do abide in. Because I think you've even had letters come in before, uh, sent to us, people wondering, 
I hear you guys talking about resting in Christ, but that just, it seems so hard. I, I don't know how to go about doing that. Yeah. And, you know, the way that I've heard that expressed to me, in, in, and I think it's true, is that it's not a how, it's a who. You know, it's, it's not how do I rest in Christ, it's that I am abiding in Christ, uh, because as we talked about, he possesses us. We've been made one with him. We're in him, and he is in us. And so abiding in him and, and resting, this rest that we have, isn't something that we try to do. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I can take that back a little bit, because it does say, you know, labor to enter this rest. But really what that's saying is that what we need to be focused on is the fact that we rest in him, and, and not that we need to work to try to become something, but we already are in him. But, uh, you know, something you were talking about there, this contrast between some of the words that Jesus said, like, sell all you have, give to the poor, hate your father and your mother, uh, you must do all these things if you're going to be my disciple. And then when you contrast that with Matthew eleven twenty eight, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Like you said, he's, uh, Jesus talked about how his yoke was easy and his burden is light. There's a big contrast there. And that, what, what that comes down to is rightly dividing the word of truth. As we've talked about in the past, there is this division in the word of truth. It's the division between the old covenant and the new covenant. It's the division between works and rest, works and faith. It's this, this division between doing to earn something from God, and instead resting in what he has already done, resting in the finished work. And so as we talk about rest, we got to keep that in mind, that Jesus sometimes was talking to a certain crowd, laying down the law, showing them how difficult and hard it is if you're going to follow the works path, if you're going to follow the path of what I can do to get right with God versus other times when Jesus was saying, come to me and I will give you rest. Because if you're trying to do it by your own works, and this is what a lot of people don't get, and I can understand how it's hard to understand, but if you're trying to follow the words of Jesus when he's laying down all this hard stuff, you actually haven't come to him so that he will give you rest. You see, again, there's that division there. In one area, he's talking about all these things that you have to do if you're going to follow that path of works. But at other times, he's talking about this rest that you can really have if you let go of all that other stuff. A big contrast there. I know it's hard for people to understand. But like you said, it's, it's such a big contrast. And in, in, uh, now that we've come to see, like through the letters of Paul, and where he talks about faith, and grace and salvation apart from works, it's easier to understand and divide the, the different times when Jesus is talking about two completely different things. Good, and that's a good point. And, and we've been working on making some of these contrasts here a little bit. When Jesus was, uh, again, an old covenant prophet, he hadn't died yet, so the new covenant had not begun, and he was ministering uh, under that law. And so sometimes it was, it was rough, it was tough, he was trying to show them, you can't do this. I know you're under the law. I know it came through Moses, but you failed the covenant. So that covenant was going to have to be replaced with something new. So quite often, whether it was the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus would be ministering the old covenant law. It brought hopelessness and despair and impossibility for people to attain. Things like telling the rich young ruler, obey every command and sell everything you've got. Some of what we just covered with the discipleship talk, that was pretty challenging stuff, pretty tough, hard to swallow. And then we see occasionally Jesus would minister some new covenant stuff that was on the brink of happening after his death. The woman caught in the act of adultery was shown mercy, even though the law said she should be stoned. I mentioned last week at one point Jesus said, he who comes to me shall never hunger and shall never thirst again. Whereas under the old covenant, Jesus said, well, there are those who are going to be uh, hungering and thirsting for righteousness, and they will be blessed, not because they hungered and thirsted for righteousness, but because they would no longer have to thirst eventually. They would no longer have to hunger for that. And, and here, again, uh, Jesus in, in, uh, in Matthew letting us know that anyone who comes to him who's exhausted and overwhelmed from religious labor, they can find rest for their souls by coming to him because his yoke is easy and, and his burden is light. 
You know, Jesus was a good egg. And that's why I would like my yolk over easy. <laughs> no, no, I thought we could get through one podcast without puns. <laughs> just one. No, just kidding. Just kidding. It's all fun. <laughs> hey, Joel, I, I, you know, I can remember. I had this story just pop into my head. When I was a teenager, I, I got food poisoning. And I, I was uh, visiting my mom. I, I came back to where I, I lived with my dad about an hour away. And I started getting really, really sick. Uh, over and over and over again and I finally you know my my dad took me up to the emergency room and it turned out to be food poisoning but the nurse uh, who was not a very cheerful lady <laughs> kind of an older <laughs> lady but not not very friendly and I mean I, I, I had I had depleted so much out of my body by this time uh, we're up there and she's trying to get me settled down and she wants to give me a shot and I guess I was so tensed up, she was saying, just relax. She was commanding me to relax. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just relax, wow. relax. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the more she was telling me that, probably the harder it was for me. <laughs> and finally, my dad spoke up and said, you know, what? it's, it's going to be hard for him to relax with you talking to him that way. <laughs> mm. Wow. And that's kind of what religion will, will do. They'll, they'll demand these things, even the simple things like Jesus is Lord, God loves you. God's dedicated to you. God's faithful to you. God paid it all. He did it all so that you don't have to. He carried the cross so you don't have to. Rest in him. And, you know, religion will try and turn all of that inside out, and it becomes up to us to make all of this happen. Even resting, sometimes we, we get tensed up about. Yeah, we really can be religious and legalistic about rest. It's, it's like being legalistic about grace. You know, what it boils down to, rest, it really is living by grace, living in God's grace. That's what, that's what rest is. It's, it's depending on not my own efforts, but it's depending upon Christ. And that's not to say that we won't, it's not to say that there's no such thing as physical, you know, getting physically active, because rest, you know, Paul said, I labored more abundantly than the other apostles, but yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So, it, you know, rest doesn't necessarily mean physical rest. It, it can't, we can work. We can work really hard while resting, but it's the dependency upon Christ is what it's all about. We're depending upon Christ. We're living in grace. And indeed, there can be it, certainly times of physical rest and relaxation never you know don't want to take away from that but i'm just saying that to rest in christ is simply to depend upon his life in us his grace at work in us uh, rather than struggling and striving to try to make this thing happen in uh, the efforts of the flesh coming up next week on growing in grace freedom from a sin consciousness we'd rather be christ conscious rather than sin conscious we'll talk about that next week maybe spend a week or two on that right here on growing in grace this has been growing in grace with mike kapler and joel brzezinski heard online through various internet sources around the world each week to access hundreds of past programs visit graceroots.org share it with a friend and listen again next week for more growing in grace